I'm going to do this because I see people do it in like behind the scenes stuff. That way I can time it. Oh, yeah. The audio and the video right there. And here we are. I I hear this weird do you hear like a weird buzzing feedback or is this just my headphones? No, I don't hear anything. Okay. Like it's it's when I talk when my levels get high enough. That's just you, pal. All right. Something I get to deal with the whole show. Welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast, the first ever Natural Habitat Podcast in Rogue Media 805, the new recording studio. We are recording video. We have a table. We have a mixer. There's a lot of cool things outside of the frame that people can't see, but they're there. Yep. And you know who else is here? It's my good friend, William Waffles. That's not the right screen. <laughs> I should probably change that so it shows William Waffles. William Waffles, there he is. Techni- what up? Technical difficulties. Out the ass Technical right away. Buzzy headphones, screen on the wrong thing. I was just showing people a feed of 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 the audio recording. It's chaos over here. It is. We also have awesome Ty in hey, the house. Hey, How the are real you? awesome Ty. I'm gonna have to Yo, change my Instagram up? handle to the real awesome Ty. <laughs> now, I, I just that just occurred to me because I always thought that was stupid when people would have the real awesome, you know, like or the real so on. Uh-huh. But, but there's an imposter awesome Ty out there now. So I, I mean, Jesus. Yeah. Have you heard this, Bill? No. There is a there is some some guy out there that is rapping under the name of Awesome Ty. He seems like a younger guy yep. in his like young twenties. Look, I can't I can never figure out it's lower it's low twenties? No. Early twenties. Yeah, he's in his like early twenties, late teens, I would say. <laughs> I, I know, I'm high. I'm too high for this. 20s. Uh and he raps under the name Awesome Ty. And uh on on the most recent episode of Awesome Ties Running for Mayor, this the real Awesome Tie actually uh, challenged this alleged Awesome Tie to an Awesome Tie off. Yeah, not what? to not to get off on a tangent about my show, but it just occurred to me, you know, it, is it is it is it here, here I you know, is it a tie off of like formal ties or like knots? Or just to tie off no, of like awesomeness? A tie, yeah, uh, of awesomeness. Uh huh. Okay. Just, it just okay. occurred to me, you know. Um, not that Steve Martin and Steve Martin, you know, Steve Martin's had to deal with that. This, yeah. This gimmick imposter, Steve Martin, running around. Very true. You know, very now true. Now I have to deal with the same thing. It's uh-huh. it's almost fake. But yeah. back to the topic at hand. <laughs> well, well, is it one of the biggest forms of uh, flattery? Uh, imitation. Imitation. Yeah, but I don't think it's flattery so much as just a uh, uh, negligence of doing due diligence, which was a su- simple Google search. Like, is this name in use? Yeah, how hard is it to Google Awesome Ty before you use it? Because he's a new guy. There's not like a whole bunch of his music. Is he back is he to- local? No, no. I don't know where he's from. I don't even know that he has like his own I think body from- of work. He was just like featured on somebody else's song in the the video, but it definitely states that his name's Awesome Ty, yeah. which I take exception to. I think he's from South Korea or something like that. But mm. either way, Awesome Ty off is going down at one point. Yeah, and uh, and now you are the real Awesome Ty. So I I did that years ago. I I made the real Mikey Booyah at gmail.com. And I was like, oh yeah, this is for all those imposters that are trying to be me. Yeah. Nobody tries to be me. There's no other. Yeah, I always Booyahs thought the same thing. There. I was like, that's stupid. I would never have to do you that. Know, I use, I, I use the real I don't Mikey Booyah I was the for first spam. or second one to come up with it, but William Waffles is taken up in many different screen name options. Yeah. Well, I assume that there's probably lots of people that own restaurants named William. Yeah. And when you think about it, like, for every person that has, like, a screen name, like, they don't just have one. Like, we all probably have, like, a dozen screen names that we've used at one point or another. So you you, you multiply True. that by everybody. Like, yeah. obviously, like, the by, the by this point, the majority of good names are going to be taken. Yeah, they all get eaten up. Well, even, like, bad names like Poop Face. Yeah, There's that's a gone. Poop Face 1, 2, 3. Because uh-huh. somebody already has the Poop Face. <laughs> Very True. I saw this like Vsauce video that was all about usernames and how long until we run out of them. Yeah, it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. Very true. So they're, it's going to be end up being like thirteen forty eight one nine. Robert yeah. the Duder. Yeah, it's twenty nine six A B three X one zero nine five three two four eight. Yeah, if we're and lucky, like- if we're lucky, we could fit words in the middle. Otherwise. It's mostly just going to be a string of numbers and letters. Or we're just going to have to keep moving on to new platforms. Like, stop using Gmail because all the good Gmails are taken. Dude, and start was... using Ymail or some... some... Dude, I-, I lucked out and got my... My Gmail is, like, 
my actual name. No numbers, no nothing else. And your name is Bill that Johnson. That's like that's I know. Like, you must have got used? that like the ground like, floor. Ground floor yeah. You used your free AOL disk to get your <laughs> Gmail account. <laughs> 2002. That's heavy, man. You should sell that to like some professional Bill Johnson. Fuck you. <laughs> like a I'm lawyer. Professional. You should I'm sell professional it. professional with doing everything, motherfucker. Yeah, all right. I didn't mean to question your prof- professionalism. You did. You did. No, I, I did question it, but I didn't mean to. Mm. I didn't think you'd get so offended. But mm. uh, today we are here at the new studio for a reason. And that reason is... That this is our once a month special Omniology Project episode where we get creepy. We get spooky. We get lit. A Capital One ad is playing on my computer. We get Uh -uh. fed advertisements for Capital One. This episode is brought to you by Capital One. The Macabre. Oh. (laughs) Macabre. The the Macabre. (laughs) Capital One. The unknown. The unexplained. The You're, spookiest interest <laughs> rates in the game. That's what I was just going to do, an interest rates joke. <laughs> you beat me to it. Uh, and today we uh, we decided that we would talk about cults because this has been very prevalent in, uh, in popular culture right now. I mean, oh. co- cults have always been interesting to everybody. But it's a hot topic. Hot topic with Far Cry 5 out now yeah. based around a cult. Yep. yep. Wild, wild <laughs> country on Netflix. Yeah, as a hit documentary <laughs> series. Yeah, a lot of people are watching that right now. We we just finished it. Did you finish it, Bill? Yeah, I finished it. I know you guys were watching it, and I know that the city of Rajneesh Purim is uh, still abandoned up there in Oregon. Um, we'll get to that. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. but we'll get to there. Uh, before that, I have some interesting tidbits about someone that you guys might know. You might have heard the name. Jim Jones. The uh. the Harlem rap singer? <laughs> no, he's the... Of ballin' fame? No, he's actually the front man for My Morning Jacket. Jim, Jim Jones, he's the guy who owns that uh, famous barbecue joint in Kansas City, right? How come none of you guys could be serious ever? <laughs> what is the deal with this? Jim Jones is the founder of Jonestown, the People's Temple, one of the biggest mass suicides in the history of, of America, of the the world no maybe not the world <laughs> of america <coughs> and whenever you think i don't of, think it was in america though <laughs> no it wasn't and and i don't think it was a suicide so yeah there yeah okay well very true yeah <laughs> fine everything i said is wrong thanks guys okay well this is probably one of the biggest mass murder slash suicide question marks that ever happened at one point in America and then moved out of America and then went down. And that is the Jonestown Massacre. They did. Mm-hmm. They were in Idaho and then they moved to California and then they moved out to the jungles of fucking Panama or wherever it was. Yeah. So, Something like that. Uh, that's, that's always what my, what my mind went to whenever I thought of this genre of the Macra Bay. Jonestown. Yeah, I think that's the, the most famous one. That's where you get the... The euphemism drinking the Kool Aid from uh-huh. don't drink the Kool Aid and yeah you know that's I think wait that's, when you say it do you say drink the Kool Aid because I say don't drink the Kool Aid well uh, it's you know it's just a common expression for any time somebody is buying into somebody else's propaganda you express it as oh they're drinking his Kool Aid do you or do you not drink the Kool Aid tie it, dep- it depends honestly. on whose whose Kool Aid it is okay that's an honest question yeah sure <laughs> very true. I once had somebody say, "Don't drink my Kool Aid." Yeah, I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't yeah. drink my Kool Aid. Like, uh, like that's always been a thing. Like, don't be sipping up on my Kool Aid. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh-huh. yeah, okay. yeah. Like you know, smoking my weed. But I think that's that's used in a different a different sense than the the Kool Aid as being. Yeah, well, I mean, Jonestown. You know, podcasts are the, especially ones like this. That are that are mostly taken in audio. This is one of our first uh, video. This is our first video podcast in the new studio. Uh, who knows how long this is going to last? Are you supposed to stare at the camera now? It might not even be recording anymore. I'm not sure because the video might, video might, the battery might die. Video might not work. I might get too lazy and not want to edit it together and just yeah. release it as audio. Yeah. 
But either way, a lot of people listen to this audio wise, and it's really, you know, words are words out of context. So I want to make sure that we get this Kool Aid thing right. Who's drinking it? Who's not drinking it? Is it bad or good if you drink it? What's the deal? What like flavor is this Kool Aid? Grape Kool Aid is my favorite. Yeah? Grape Kool Aid for sure. Well, see, that's what flavor the air quotes there for those who can't see that. The Kool Aid was, was grape. Really? Was it? I heard yeah. it was fruit punch. Yeah, I thought it was fruit punch. That, that's what I would have pictured, at least in my head. Yeah, red. It's definitely, it, it, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a red purple Kool-Aid. drink. Have you guys seen? Oh, so it wasn't even brand. It was an off-brand purple drink Kool Aid then. Yeah, yeah. They didn't. They, they they didn't have like technical Kool Aid packets. Was it the stuff from the Sunny D commercial where they were like, "Do you want Seven Up purple stuff?" It, it was mo- it was most likely bulk a <laughs> bulk or, or food Sunny buy D. <laughs> of some type of you know artificial purple drink. Uh huh. I mean, they were in Guatemala or wherever. Some sort of like off-brand Tang type deal. Yeah. Do you think that yeah. they, you know, you even had to mix in sugar, or do you think it was just like you dumped this shit into water and you're good to go? Well, yeah, well, it probably I mean, had sugar in it. Yeah, it's probably yeah. what I'm thinking. Well, ch- children were freaking out, and well, the children were being told, "Don't worry, um, the bitter taste will go away quickly." So it wasn't sweet. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't technically the, the arsenic and and the other drugs associated with it were more powerful than the drink. So there was an offset, if I'm correct, of um, morphine and arsenic. Um, if that's correct, I don't know if it's morphine, but they were supposed to have a certain amount of morphine to where you would immediately go numb, and then so you wouldn't feel the arsenic collapsing your body. Yeah. Uh, the problem was they put too much arsenic in and not enough morphine. So when all the children were going first, a lot of the parents were having to watch their children suffocate and die horrible deaths. So that's when it became more of a problem for the adults to do so. Yeah, that's when shit gets real. And then, But then it's like you hit a point of no return because you just killed your kid. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a weird catch-22 kind of moment. Where you realize, like, oh man, we're actually doing this, but you do it to your kid first. But that's kind of why people have kids, right? They're extensions of themselves, and that's why people that hate themselves beat their kids. That could be. You know, I saw like a a. It wasn't a documentary movie, or like a, it wasn't even like a um a mockumentary, but it was um. They didn't. They didn't use the actual names. Like they didn't call it Jones Jonestown. They didn't call him Jim Jones. Oh, yeah. but it was like a movie that came out in the past couple of years. I want to say Vice might have had something to do with it. I want to say. Or, or, do you know what I'm talking about? There, there was a movie that Kevin Smith made, and it was called Red Country. That uh, and and it was with uh, it was with John Goodman. And John that might have been it. That might was, have been it. He was Jim James, but they like changed all the names yeah. and everything. Yeah, the name, but it was like the exact same mm-hmm. story. I yeah. mean, down to everything happening, down to them moving to to the other country and the Kool Aid and all all of that shit. And like, but um, the reason I th- I want to say the um, they switch it to where the catalyst for the the mass suicide or whatever is a vice reporter coming to to do a story about about the cult leader or whatever uh-huh. and. You know, shit hits the the wall and all, it was, all uh, goes down. It was Red State from 2011 was the name of the mm-hmm, movie. And that mm-hmm. is a very good movie. If anybody out there <sighs> hasn't seen it, watch it. That shit's dope. And it pretty much tells the story of Jonestown without getting sued. You know? Mm. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, that, that reminds me of what you were saying of the mixture of morphine and, uh, and cyanide or arsenic. Red, I want to say red, was, cyanide, cyanide. Cyanide is what correct. it was. Red, red Not state. Is, are you sure it was red state? I think oh, so. Yeah. Oh, wait. Or have you not re- seen red state? There's two red states. There's one about neo Nazis, and then it looks like there might be like another one about the the one with John Goodman about the. Uh, oh yeah, John Goodman's a cop is what it is. John Goodman's like the FBI agent that goes in to take it out. What? And then there's, have you not seen this movie? I, I want to think, I think I might be thinking of something different then. Ty, you need to fucking leave this podcast right now and go watch <laughs> Red State. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Like, if you work tonight, watch it tonight. It's a great movie. But what did you, you saw, because I think I might have seen what you saw too. This kind of mockumentary. I feel like John Goodman was in it though. And like, I, if, I, I'm looking here like, 
like he played Joseph Keenan. Um, let's see. I'm looking up Vice Jonestown movie, The Sacrament. Possibly. Uh, yep, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and that does have John Goodman. Dang. Well, I haven't seen that, so yeah, that's totally it. And it's it's. That's well, look it's at pretty, that. Pretty solid. You both have seen separate movies that have basically the same plot to them. Yeah. With John Goodman in it. <laughs> with John Goodman. John Goodman's <laughs> one of my favorite actors. Man. John Goodman's an OG. Yeah, John Goodman's dope. Triple OG. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, that mixture of the morphine and the cyanide reminds me of um, Wild Wild Country, where the uh, the what uh, what was his name the the bog the bogwan whatever the bogwan yeah. Bog- yeah bogwan he uh, he had his Hollywood doctor and he was asking him about the most painless ways to die. And he said pretty much the same thing. He said, hit you with a bunch of morphine so you can't feel anything, and then hit you with cyanide so that you die and you stop breathing and you don't mm-hmm. feel anything. So this seems to be anybody out there that's looking to start a cult or commit suicide, winning formula right there. Morphine, cyanide, in that order. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll die wrong, which it's like, who cares? You know what I mean? At this point. You already killed your kid, but uh, it was uh, it was definitely a huge crazy thing. I need to go watch this movie, The Sacrament. Yeah, is there like any footage of like Jim Jones like talking to people? Like, oh, tons. Like, I need to look into that. I could probably go down the wormhole of like all the cult leaders like like talking. Uh-huh. I want to see like you know, I want to see like how people could get lured in. Oh. See that's that's what's real interesting about the um specifically these two cult leaders. We have Jim, Jim Jones and uh Bagra Bhagwan Rani uh Rajneesh mm-hmm. if I'm correct. Yeah, in, I mean they're, oh, they're well, on but, completely but, different but listen, spectrums but, though. I mean I wouldn't even say They're on different say... spectrums but listen to what I'm about to say. What's what's unique about both of them is at the time of them doing their thing Video cameras were very readable and brand new to everybody. So, but with, with both cults, almost the entire thing was recorded from within. Yeah, that's so the there is part about, there is a significant yeah. amount of footage of both inside outside events from both of those cults. Yeah, and I mean we haven't which had, we don't have from very many other ones. Yeah, we don't have video recorded history, you know, for very long at all. Right. So. That's definitely a trip to watch it and see it all go down in color. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I, mean, mm-hmm. I guess we'll get into it with the the Bogwan, but the the mass wiretapping they were doing on all of the people there the entire time was pretty crazy. That that was insane. Yeah. Every single form of communication was bugged and or went through. Every piece of mail was read entirely. Mm-hmm. It, it was insane. And it's funny how these things were like, you know, it it had the same thing at at Jonestown where you know, when, when people came in and infiltrated this community and finally looked underneath the veil and saw what was happening, there was a lot of people that didn't want to be there, that felt like they were mm-hmm. being watched, that felt like they didn't have any freedoms, that felt like they were being held prisoner. People were like, take me with you, take me with you, take my daughter, like all this shit. And this is a, this is a thing that you at one point left your life to go and follow. Right. And like you're saying, like, I want to see, I can almost see why people get pulled into this. If you're in a certain part in your life and you're in this certain situation, everybody has this part in their life where they're lost. Sure. That's hey, what... man, the Rosnish, they fucking sound pretty mo, dude. Yeah. And yeah. Like that's... on face, I'd be about it. <clears throat> and like I, I was watching that, that um, eight-part Waco miniseries and like – like after watching that, I totally get it. Like David Koresh is like a super charismatic dude. Like if you you know, like if you were to like be able to, you know, suspend your disbelief for whatever it is, you know, he was claiming, like and just you know, just put that aside. Like David Koresh seemed like, you know, like just a super chill dude, like so I can get it like how how he would be able to, you know, use his, his propaganda machine to get people behind him just you know, yeah. because people wanna they wanna believe what he's saying. All these people are mad charismatic. And, you know, the the Bogwan well, I mean, was like always that, that all leads up to, you know, uh, now deceased. Yeah. Charles Manson. Yeah. He, I believe, in most of all cult leaders was the most manipulative and 
conniving. I mean, yeah. he, 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 he's, he, you, he was, he was nice. He and, was a cool guy. And back to your point about the video camera, since they didn't have that, he's also probably the most fabled because we, you know, we yep. don't have like a lot of, a lot of audio right. of Charles May. I mean, it's out right there, before not- all of the availability came out was the era of Charles Manson and the child and the flower child. Yeah, so we didn't have. There's more of his music than there is of him talking about mm-hmm. anything. Right. Mm-hmm. He was real secretive about his shit. But, you know, all these people have the same quality to where they're extremely likable. People want to be around them. People feel this positive energy. And, you know, I'm sure that we all know people like that at a much smaller level where you're like, oh, man, this guy's super cool. Like, you know, I really enjoy, like, this person and they're really positive or whatever. And just take that times of times a thousand and you have these mm-hmm. people – that, like I said, can get people in this part of their life where they are they don't have any direction. They don't know what they're doing. They've been told something their whole lives. Maybe they grew up religious and then yep. they left the religion. Now they're lost. And this guy finds this perfect opportunity, this Charles Manson, this Bogwan, this Jim Jones, and is like, hey, we have this thing that's everything that you're looking for. We have this mm-hmm. family. We have this acceptance. No one will ever steal from you. No one will ever hurt you. We'll all help you. And of course you're going to go to that. You know, what am I going to live in my car? Or am I going to go yeah, live free, in this free giant love, free village food, with this love? You, you know, know right? like, yeah. And you notice they all have uh, a heavy supply of machine guns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Which is, well, you know, well, contrary to the, the, the love part. <laughs> well, that's the best way to love, you know? So no, 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 no. Love, love within, not love outwards. There's a difference. Love yourself. So, uh, what I found real interesting is I was doing a little research because, you know, I, I live about a half hour away from uh, where Rajneesh Puram was. Uh-huh. So after I get done watching it, I'm like, cool, you know, maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I'll uh, drive out there and ghost town it up, right? Yeah. So I started doing research, and we have a company that bought it. Um. Let me see here real quick. Oh, I'm all wrong. While you're, while you're pulling that up. Going to gentrify the fucking yeah. Rajneesh. While you're pulling that I up, I do have, up, I do have real quick the yep. the punch used at Jonestown was grape flavored flavor aid. So it was an oh, off brand grape Kool Aid. So, Bill, I, 100 I know my points. stuff, man. 100 points for you. Also, okay, do you have who bought it? Yes. All right, who is it? Okay. So Dennis R. Washington uh, bought the Big Muddy Ranch is what the town started calling it after they took back over of everything uh-huh. and kind of left it to be derelict. They called it the Big Muddy Ranch. Uh, he bought the estate in 1991. He attempted the ranch for profit but failed multiple times. He also tried to convince the state to let him turn it into a state park. In 1996, Washington donated the ranch to a group called Young Life, a Christian youth organization. Since 1999, Young Life has operated summer camp there for the first wild horse camp. So, I wanted to learn what Young Life was. Yeah. What's Young Life? Young Life is a youth group based in Colorado Springs. The ministry was started in Dallas. Young Presbyterians operates globally. Okay. So I did a little research into him. In November of 2007, Michuan, the the director, um, so essentially what was happening is they wouldn't allow them to talk about Jesus or perset or introduce them to the thought of the Lord or Christ your Savior until they have fully repented and they have quote unquote stewed in their own sins for a while. Ooh, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Young Life. Yes, mind you, Young Life. This is a child's youth group camp. It's like, no, you don't get forgiveness yet. <laughs> you need to go ahead and just kind of be afraid for a you while. Need to think about what yeah, you've done. Right? That's Yeah, you need to think about what you've done. God sent you to your room. Yep. That's crazy. They're grounded by God. Stew in your own juices. <laughs> Man, that's some heavy so shit. So essentially, the territory was handed from one cult to another. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. Except it's a, a far more widely accepted cult in the United States. Yeah. Hey, man. Cult, a cult, a cult, it's bro. A cult, sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, these, we'll, we'll move on to, we're already at Wild Wild Country, but 
that is a crazy ass story. Let's not forget about uh this guy who was the heir to what was it like Nike that lived in the town. Yeah, there was like big Nike money there, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just the overt racism from everyone in town. Oh yeah, all everyone's those people... like, I don't understand this. Yeah, so I don't so like. So it's it. bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they even they say just they, they don't really to like. Right. <laughs> they don't really dance around that. They're just like, you know well, what? I don't like it. I don't understand it. I don't want it here. Uh-huh. You know, uh, Eastern Oregon, especially you know, even back in the eighties. Was so fucking racist. See, and I if didn't... you know, and, and if you notice when you're watching through Wild Wild Country, who lives there and who was there when you see the photographs of it happening? Old, old ass people, yeah. White yeah. People. It was like some retirement town antelope. Mm-hmm. Everybody went there to go buy a house with their money that they saved their whole lives or build one and yep, live out the rest exactly. of their lives and die in peace. Yep. And then all these other people. That are that are different with their different values, with their red shirts. And yeah, their, their red shirts and having sex uh-huh. down at the stop signs, having sex and from all over the world. And they're like, I don't names. like this. Yeah, with your weird names and your weird streets. I don't like it. I don't Ugh. like it. It was just a bunch of racist old white people going. I don't like it. I don't understand it. And I don't like it. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. just so happened to be right, but uh, most of them had <laughs> right. Most of them had no fact to go on. Exactly, at all. they they didn't even know. Mm-hmm. They didn't even leave their house. They're just like, uh, I don't know, I don't like it. <laughs> so that was. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. When you got some weird group of people that wear all red, yeah, that that's that's live outside shit. of your town, and then all of a sudden take over your town. Uh huh. And this dude, I get a little creeped out myself. Oh yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, and this dude was creepy too. How he blamed it all on, all on Sheila when she left. And yeah. oh yeah, by the way, spoilers if you haven't seen oh, yeah. Wild Wild Country. <laughs> uh, he blamed it all on her and was like, I. He always said since the beginning, he's like, I'm not a god, I'm not Buddha, I'm not Jesus, I'm you. Like, what even does he do? Like that, that was they never made that clear. Like, what do the people see in him? Like, you know. He, so he so he he's written a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Oh, is he like okay? He, yeah. he he has like formal teachings that he he talks about and presides <laughs> to to people and people read of. So, um, the Rajneesh uh, religion expands very largely into India. Actually, it's where it's based out of. They were originally pushed out of there for fraud reasons. Uh-huh. Um probably same reason they'll get pushed out of anywhere they try to go it's they have one scheme and that's what they do yeah so. and uh uh he like i was gonna say something i totally had a point about he fucking oh have you ever heard of alan watts yeah yeah so alan watts is like uh he does like like Eastern philosophy for a Western audience. Right. And it was like in this, in about the same time, like the seventies or eighties or something like that. And he was writing books and making tapes and living in some boat. The big difference between him and the Bhagwan was that he was living in a boat in San Francisco in the wharf that was all run down and moldy. And I want to say that's where he died. And he swore off a bunch of shit and wasn't really into material things. But he sold his books and made some money, and that made it so he could live, you know what I mean? But this guy had the same shit. He talked the same way, had the same things, made the same points. It's all the same stories. Just It's like like how the Bible is, you know, Egyptian stories told over again. It's yeah. the same with this stuff. They're all the same old philosophies, and it's just about how you tell them with, you know, if you have, if you're charismatic, if you have something that people, I mean, I heard... When I was looking into this wild, wild country thing, I heard a lot of people say that people that were followers of the church say that Bhagwan reminded them of their father. And a lot of people were like, his eyes are like my father's eyes. Yeah, or the see, way I, that he talks, I, I had like that. This. Like I heard that a lot was, oh, oh, his eyes, his eyes, his eyes, his eyes made me melt or something. And I'm just like, eh. I mean, well, I just they, don't... They, they have to say the eyes because for 80% of the time he, he was in America, 
He didn't speak. Right. But, I mean, it just that just seems ludicrous And he to me. did have those piercing eyes, but they made Ooh. me not trust him. Yeah. They didn't make me like... Yeah. I didn't see I didn't see anything in the eyes. And then he just they walks not around trustworthy. It, you they know, with, his hands, with his uh, hands praying. And, the, na- the namaste. Yeah, and... I just okay. Can I tell? Like... Can I tell you guys something? And you guys promise that it doesn't leave this room, except for to the people that are listening on the podcast Rocket, you know. <laughs> and watching on the video. He reminded me of my dad, dude. He did. He looked like my dad in like a lot of ways. And then I thought that before I read about it, and it creeped me the fuck out. And I feel like if I was in this certain point in my life, he might have got me. Not like I was like daddy, you know what I mean? But like. There was, he had that thing that people, that appealed to people. A lot of that got me too. Cause like, like I said, Alan Watts, I listen to Alan Watts a lot and they have the same principles. So if I would have been in, you know, maybe if Alan Watts was a crazy cult leader, he could have got me. Maybe See, he I, is. When, when he finally spoke, I just wasn't that compelled. Like, like David Koresh, like when David Koresh speaks, like, even though he's like, you know, he's basically saying, you know, I'm the Lamb of God, and, you know, and I'm, I'm communicating directly with God and all this stuff. And like, you know, gives his whole spiel like he still he's, says he's so polite about it and like so, so just such a nice guy that like you're kind of you kind of just want it all to be true you're like well you know like i mean stranger things have happened right like mm-hmm. you know what i mean well you see the the bhagwan wasn't so much about how he spoke it, it, it was all about his presence right yeah it, it must have been because i i don't you know i don't get yeah it. you you had to like physically be in front of there, him right. to see what yeah. was going on you, you know what i mean had an aura to him it must have just been other people. It probably started with the people right underneath them telling stories. Everybody told stories. They boosted it up because for a lot of the, for most of the history of the church, he was, he was in hiding. He wasn't talking to anybody. He was gone mm-hmm. for seven years. He was in silence for four years. There's like a whole thing, you know? So and like, I feel like a big part to having any successful cult is your ability to offer homeless people like free food and lodging and poison beer. <laughs> Right, the a, poison beer. That was a crazy Two beers part a day. of the story. That was nuts. Yeah. So uh, when, when she's when the dudes are like, "Do we do we get to drink?" and she's all like, "How many beers do they get? Two 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 beers a day? You can have two beers a day." I'm like, "There's something up with them beers." Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Something's going on. <laughs> totally. So I <laughs> oddly specific. All right. So I have a question right? for both of you guys, and that is. Put yourself in this situation, all right? It's when was the Vietnam War? First, I need to ask that. That was like the late sixties. Okay, put yourself in the summer of sixty nine. Okay, is that too late? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. right. That's right in there. I think. I okay, think it yeah. ended like seventy one, maybe. So. All right, we'll say summer of sixty nine. Uh, that's Woodstock. You're a yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> you just got done with Woodstock. You're fucking all naked. You did a bunch of a bunch just of acid. fucking all kinds of dirty broads. Yeah, left you, and right, uh-huh. <laughs> just piles. And this was before the AIDS epidemic, so just smelling horrible. <laughs> uh-huh. That's really all you got was the just smell. Smelling like a real piece of shit. Uh huh. And you did a bunch of psychedelics. You are living this hippie lifestyle. Uh, you got a draft letter in the mail a couple months ago, and you said, fuck that. I don't have a mailing address. Exactly. That's what you said. You denied having a mailing address, and you were like, rip that up. I don't need it. You're on the run. You got nothing going on. You're traveling with a couple people, and then you find out about this cult. It doesn't have to be Jim Jones or David Koresh or anybody. Just it's kind of this group of people that all, you know, they farm they live together. Dude, dude, you you could easily use the word commune because that's how commune. most. I'm cults picturing start. that that caravan that Forrest Gump's girlfriend left him for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we are. That's okay, put yourself there. That's where. You, that's who you run into. Would you go and join this group? Do you think that there's any chance that you would do this? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I figure you know if you're real caught up in the '60s, man, you're just gonna go with whatever. Well, happens. Dude, I absolutely would have done it. You know, it, it it depends on your age. I'm gonna say a lot of sure. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's that. Yeah, there's that little would window. I, would I would I do it at like 30, 35? Uh, maybe. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's... maybe it's like oh, I have a shitty life and I need to fucking I get to fuck these nineteen year olds, dude. Like. 
But is that your impression of you? <laughs> is that what you sound like? I bet. I bet that's how it was too. Like sure. during the during the summer of free love and all that. You know, I bet it was like you know, like largely a lot of like you know, just like super uninhibited like kids. But then you also probably had like like these like forty year olds that were just using it as an excuse to try to fuck teenage uh, bitches. They had those like gold necklaces like caught in their chest hair, like grown <laughs> around it. And they're like hey, just like any time you go to a nudie beach. Yeah, very true. Nudie beach, there's a bunch of pervs. You get like old man. You're like, yeah, peace. You, baby. you might see like two good looking <laughs> chicks and then like maybe a few other chicks and then like ninety percent dude. Uh-huh. Like old floppy gray bush, little teeny wieners that just are poking out like mushrooms. All like, all like standing gross. behind rocks, like all weird, <laughs> like looking at people and shit. <laughs> it's like that's not proper they walk, nude beach. They walk by. They walk by like three times. You know uh, what? I, I've actually tried to look into this before, like even before all these, these nude beaches. Oh, yeah, well, nude beaches for sure. <laughs> Who has it? But um, even before all these, you know, he's um, tried to look into nude beaches. These cult shows started popping up again. Um, like I've been fascinated with, like, are there any cults that are presently operating? Yeah, like major cults, you know, that are like on some shady shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what'd you find? Uh, I think there is. I think there was. I I could, I could you know, I write it down and save the information. But yeah, I, I f- remember we were talking about uh, serial killers, me and someone recently, and I was talking about how all the best serial killers were like back in the day, and there's not a lot of real recent serial killers. Right. Like yeah. with like with cooling off periods, you know what I mean? A lot of that has to do with technology, man. Yeah, people are caught faster. I feel right? like, you know, as with think serial about, killers, think about the shit you could get away with in the 80s. As with oh, serial God. killers, you know, you're real if they're doing it right, you're really not going to know about a cult or a serial killer until something ends tragically. Very true. Uh here I have 17 weird and creepy cults still active today. And on that last quick topic, um, the most recent and like influential serial killer that I could find mm-hmm. was the Craigslist killer. Forgot about that. Oh, yeah. He totally That's had right. the cooling off period. He killed like 11 people or some shit. That I totally just pulled that number out of my ass. That's not even crazy. Yeah, now, nowadays, modern serial killers they they do all their serial killing within the span of like you know three minutes with a AR fifteen. Very true. So if that doesn't count. That's a mass murderer. Yeah, I mean, there's a it's difference. Still, it's it's still you know a serial killer by definition. No, it's not. No, no it's by not. definition, I mean no. se- like you're killing a serial. No, no, by definition, I mean, it's not. Yeah, the definition of a serial killer <laughs> is that you have three or more victims and that you have a cooling off period oh, of at there, least there a month a, in between okay, victims. Okay, okay, then yeah. So you have to kill someone, have a period if where the, you deal with it, where you think about it, where you have no remorse, and then you go and kill someone again. Okay, if it's defined by having that, that buffer period, then yeah. okay. Because right. we all have those split moments where we could kill someone, and that doesn't make you a serial killer. That just means that you fucked up. Right. You blew I, I, it. Yeah. You blew yeah, it. Okay. But, but but it's the fact that you've come True back that. four or five times. Yeah. a few months apart. Yeah, there's every crimes time of passion. So. There's you know mentally unstable. Right. There's all these different things. But sometimes nobody can find your cat. You're just a serial killer. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have um, let's see uh, the brethren, also known as Body of Christ and Garbage Eaters, are an apocalyptic offshoot of the '70s Jesus movement. And they live as vagrants, and they are uh, still active. So you need money with a cult. Yeah, very true. You got to be well funded. Fundamentalist Latter Day Saints, an offshoot of Mormonism. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's kind of like a fringe cult, really. They uh, embrace when... polygamy. Yeah. I mean, that's isn't that just most of Utah? Yeah, and there's only like there's ten thousand members in rural Utah. <laughs> So, and then uh, that's why that's why Rajneesh was so pissed because of them. What about the snake handlers? That's a thing, right? I think so. Congregation for the light. Um, that one doesn't look that great. None of these look that cool. They're kind of just like, hey, no, they're all they're all religions, bro. Yeah, they're all religions. They're all their own little religions that they made that could potentially have some creepy cult activity, but 
like Ty said, and could potentially have some non-taxable, yeah, capabilities. Yeah, that's pretty much what they're doing. Like the Church of Cannabis, trying to get tax exempt. But yeah. like Ty said, any good serial killer or cult, you're not going to know that they're that until it's too late. Did you guys see that? Um that ceremony of the AR-15s or whatever. Oh, yeah, with all the old religious yeah, ladies. That, yeah, and they're all in the like the purple robes and shit, and they're all carrying the AR. That I mean, that, that seems like some clear cult activity. I can't remember exactly what their deal was, but, I mean, if that's not some cult-like behavior, I, I sure don't know what any is. Yeah. Well, okay, what's the definition of cult? Uh, Creeping me out. <laughs> the, a group of a weirdos. A group of people that creeps out awesome, the real weirdos. awesome tie. Uh, let's see. I'm going to find out right now. Cult definition, and we will get to the science of it, which is a cult is a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object. A relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. Yeah, that's it. So that's, I mean... A misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. So people that worship uh, some some guy or some sort of idol and uh, are strange. So really any religion can be defined <laughs> so as a cult. Yeah. So Christians, pretty... Yeah, anything. Uh, there's a lot a- of things. Any and all religions. The only, the only difference is the, you know, the percentage of people that Christianity makes feel uncomfortable versus the percentage of people that, you know, the Bog, <laughs> Bog Radon or whatever, mm. which, you know, obviously in America, for obvious reasons, yeah, it's completely disproportionate. I don't, I don't know. Catholic priests have done a, done a number. True. Yeah, very true. There was a... There, I was like, I heard something about a relocation program that they did with Catholic priests where there was this guy that was in charge of whenever a priest would get in trouble for, you know, banging out a little boy's butthole, then this other priest was in charge of moving them to a new church in a new yeah. town. And he started moving them all to the same place. And, like, fucking thousands of altar boys got, like, molested and raped and shit by, like, it was just pretty much a like a lion's den of rapists, like where they were all at the same place together. And that place became Florida. That's right. (laughs) Nothing (laughs) great ever comes out of Florida. I mean, things that are entertaining definitely come out of Florida, but I've never been like, that's awesome. I'm always like, that's fun to look at and not so fun to be at. Like the backyard amusement parks. It's the physical penis of the United States. It is. It's the dangler. It's either a penis or a shit coming out. Either way... Stinky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I think that we've, what about, you didn't really answer the question, Bill. Are you joining this cult or what? This hypothetical cult that I talked about. Well, I mean, it depends on their values. And- if we really broke it down, how many cults are we already in? Exactly. How difficult do you guys think it realistically it would be to start up a religious cult, like actually do it and get like, say, a hundred serious, diehard, willing to die for it followers? Super easy. With, with, with technology and social media today, not that hard. Dude, super easy. And it's already been done time and time again. One of those times by the Church of Cranibus, which is a tax exempt religious uh, foundation where we spread positivity. We get high. And, uh, you know, we just spread the good word. So, amen, Abyss. Amen, Abyss. Abyss, I'm going to pray really quick. Do it. Brother uh, Brother Waffle's going to get his prayer on. And you can go ahead and follow Church of Cranibus and join the Facebook group. Hey, get that torch out of here. It's really loud. Hot torch. I can't turn him down. I turned him down all the way. <laughs> I turned him down all the way, and there was still audio. Well, uh, yeah, man, I think that it would be super easy. And you would need you would need a little bit of money, um, like some sort of compound to offer like people shelter. Get some. I mean, you start maybe with some street people, like that kind of like they did. You bust in some street people. Here, look, you're Do starting I- way too late. I think you got to start. Step one is memes, one hundred percent. Step yeah. one, you hit them with the memes. We're in meme culture right now, Ty. You got to make memes, have the memes, get them out there. Everyone gets aware of it. Then they're like, "Hey, meme guys, starting a compound." 
I want to go do that. <laughs> and then you do the compound. <laughs> Have you seen any um, successful successful <laughs> memes or or meme artists transfer into having a compound <laughs> that work in yes. Or... Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh huh. I've seen uh you know John the, John the, Johnson. The Irma Gad. The Irma Gad, little fag. Irma Gad. Uh huh. They got a compound. Compound. Word. Compound. Name name another thing. Uh, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know that one where the dog, the 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 dog goes and gets the beer for the dude. Uh huh. Dog's got a compound. It's like a giant dog yep. house. Uh, yep. you know, um, uh, what's her name? The ain't nobody got time for that girl. Yep. Uh, yeah. Foxy Brown or Gloria Brown or something like that. Yeah. Compound. She lives in a compound now. It's, I like to. I like it's, it's to prison, but. think that there is just a, you know like a one one big one yeah kind of like a prison where all the internet all the internet people like go when they're not famous anymore <laughs> they're just kept there and they like, like feed them and like yeah give them you got like the stuff. cash me outside girl and uh-huh. you've got all the way back to chocolate rain guy with the piano yeah <laughs> you you can go give them pellets out of the 25 actually, cent machine. that was totally <laughs> that, that was actually totally a south park yeah. episode remember um yeah i remember that they were all just chilling there mm-hmm. they're all sad now nobody wants to see that shit you had the the ain't, kid with the lightsaber. Ain't nobody got time for it. Ain't nobody got time for that video, right? I don't know how many times I got to say this, but it's over. It's a dead meme. The new memes are uh, what's the newest thing in the world? Oh, I guess April Fool's Day just happened, and the new meme was let's do April Fool's Day a day early, and everybody did all their April Fool's Day jokes on the thirty first. You know how like businesses and websites like always change all their stuff and try to throw the I'm, throw I'm, the dupe I must on have people. That one. Petco is uh is offering a salon that makes you over so that you look like your dog and like all this stupid shit like that. So that's a meme, technically. A meme is pretty much something that spreads throughout a community of people without uh Without genetics involved or something like that, so it's some something that's you're not, thinking of viral something that's not organic that spread. Well, yeah, it's a viral meme. That's that's why it's called viral. Here, look, I'll look up a de- a definite. This is how fucking old I am right now. I'm gonna look up meme definition. <laughs> Should call it a meme. Uh, a meme. <laughs> I called it meme for a long time. Did you? Yeah, and then. It never really caught on. Uh, an element of a culture or system of behavior that may be considered to be passed from one individual to another by non-genetic means, especially imitation. So you meme on shit, and you just make fun of it. <laughs> and it's like like planking, you know what I mean? Planking just kind of spread through everyone, and nobody had to fuck or have babies for it to spread. It just spread, and everybody was just imitating it. And that's the culture we live in. Monkey see, monkey do, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did I just make you guys depressed, both of you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I made myself a little sad of the world we're living in. I'm getting ready to go see player number, ready player one. Is that yeah. What it is? Ready player one and Tomb Raider, double feature at the drive-in. Ooh. And I'm afraid that ready player one is going to be too heavy on the nostalgia. Because that's what the world is right now. I heard that the book, though, is even, like, way more heavy on nostalgia. And the the book is, like, is so heavy on it that the the movie could never even come close to that. Because they they would have had to license way too much shit to ever be able to, like, actually do the... I haven't read the book, so I have no idea. I have no... It looks like a new version of Tron. Yeah. See, I didn't watch Tron, so... I didn't like Tron. I didn't like Tron. I didn't like the... I never saw the original trial, and then I watched the new one with Jeff Bridges, and uh, that show was dumb. Yeah, that's what I heard. Boring. I heard that it didn't dumb, stand dumb, up to the dumb, original. Dumb. It's just like you know, oh, you're in this little, this little track with the with the lights and the bicycles. And, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I've seen this referenced on Family Guy, so I get yeah, the whole get, thing. Yeah, exactly. You see it, it once. All. You've seen it all. That's all you need to see. Yeah. Uh, so I'm getting ready to go see that. I'm not sure how that's going to be, but then again. I don't know if that's what I want is an overload of nostalgia. You don't want to be beaten over the head with it. Just be like, hey, 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 remember me? <laughs> yeah, it's a little too much. You know what I mean? 
and we're not old enough for an overload of it yet. Plus, I don't know how much of it is going to be because there's things that there's things that you remember, and then there's things that you're actually nostalgic for that trigger things in your brain. See, I feel like we got to enjoy it while we can because pretty soon there's going to be a wave of things that are becoming like having nostalgic value that we didn't even like. That was after our childhood. Yeah, exactly. So, like all of a sudden, like these Disney Channel shows, like that we didn't ever even fucking watch. You know, like or they're they're becoming like you know like. Mm-hmm. Because there's there's this peak in your life that you hit, and it's like, I want to say it's in we're, like... We're right there. Like, this is like the prime time. Like, you know, your early 30s is right, you know, like when things are like going to be marketed, you know, things from your child are going to be marketed yeah. to you because you have that expendable income now, and you have kids, and... Yeah, and this is when we're experiencing the most nostalgia because we're moving into this new you know, part of our lives exactly. and we're thinking about this older time and thinking about how we used to be. And these things that define us are these things that we loved because, you know, in your late teens and early twenties is your peak where you're absorbing all these memories and building all these, you know, all this infrastructure and all the, the, uh, foundation of who you're going to be as a person, you know what I mean? Yeah. And within that is whatever was popular at the time and whatever you were into. So everybody has that window, you know, like, uh, like Transformers, I'm not nostalgic for. I didn't watch Transformers when I was a kid. Yeah. I, I think of, uh, Megan Fox when I fucking see a Transformer and I'm like, she was pretty hot in that first Transformers movie. And then she got mm-hmm. weird when I found out she had a toe for a thumb. Well, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Megan Fox. Has a toe, thumb. One of her thumbs looks like a big toe, and the other one looks normal. Do you think she has a thumb for a toe then? Possibly. No. Possibly. Nah, she's just, her, her thumb's just like deformed and gross. Yeah, her thumb's just deformed and weird and looks like a big toe. And for some reason has never got it, uh, never got it fixed. Or is it fixed now? I don't fucking know. She's dude. probably like, this is the way God made me, and I believe in God, and God's beautiful, and God, God bless. Sounds like her, right? Was that a pretty good yeah. Megan Fox yeah. impersonation? <laughs> but uh, Sure was. But I feel like there's only going to be so many things in Ready Player One that I will personally be nostalgic for. And the rest will just be like, I remember that. I know that. Honestly, I don't really even know too much about the movie except that it's heavy in the... Yeah, I saw one trailer. Heavy in the references. I saw one trailer and I got pretty geeked on it. Supposedly but... people are super, super into the book, though. So. That's what I hear. Yeah, I don't. Even, who wrote the book? I don't even know. I don't know. It's Was it the, someone that anybody knows? I, I, like I said, I know very little about the movie. See, I haven't even like looked into it or anything. I've seen it on Cody. I, I've been thinking about giving it a watch on there. I don't think it plays. Oh yeah, yeah. I tried to watch it. Yeah, okay. I, I saw. There's a couple of um, telesyncs on Pirate Bay, but I didn't fuck with either of them. Uh, Ernest Klein is who wrote it, and it is from 2011. Ready Player One. So, I don't oh, know. so it's not that old. No, it isn't. No, it's not. I mean, it's a new story about the future, as opposed to an old story about the future, which is now, where they were like, in the world, in the year twenty twenty, we'll all have flying cars, and no one will be able to be on the ground anymore because it'll be covered in trash and like all this shit. Right. Well, and and here we are. So it, it might be cool to see this, you know, something made now of an even more distant future and see how wrong they are with this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So... I might be a little closer with this one. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what happens. And if not, then I'll just fucking hang out and watch Tomb Raider because that'll be good too. I'm geeking really? that. I always love a Tomb Raider movie. Meh. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to agree with that, man. You're gonna have to, man. Yeah. Eh. Who's even playing yeah. Tomb Ra- Raider nowadays? See, but I think is that it a new it, chick now. Yeah, it is. But I think that uh, it's because, like I said before, that's something I'm personally nostalgic for. Because I played Tomb Raider. It was one of the first. Oh yeah. See, I I didn't l- never play that game. Like long walkthrough game that I played. I played it on PC. I had the nude Raider patch. <laughs> And like she would get naked, and uh, so that was a big part of my childhood for sure. 
So I think that's why I always dug all the Tomb Raiders, and they could be bad, and Angelina Jolie can flip around all she wants, and I'll just be like, fucking Laura Croft, dope. I don't know, though. Like, I, o- <laughs> I always loved like all the Mario games, but that Mario movie was shit even when I was 10. You know what? Wait, oh, the no, one with, the one with John Leguizamo? For real? Yeah, fuck dude. that movie. <laughs> Come on, you can't fuck sit here and you. tell me that movie was awesome. <laughs> fuck you. That movie was the fucking shit. <laughs> I'm gonna say that I'm somewhere in the middle of, of both of you guys. Was it was it was it related to the video game at all? Fuck no. Yeah, it was. But who gives a shit? I it mean, was dull. I mean, like it might be like good, like ironically in retrospect now. But when I was ten, like I was, I was horribly disappointed seeing that in the theater or whatever. How old so when, I was? When was the last time you watched that? Well, you, I'm, you I'm not talking about yeah, for sure when I was, when I was that age. But I'm not, I mean I'm not you know like reviewing it now. I just meant like coming. I out, watched you it know, less than a year ago. It still holds up. Yeah, I watched it a couple years ago, and it's it's not what I what I thought it was going to be from my memory. <laughs> no, at all. Okay, well, well, how about the, for st- the Street Fighter movie then, for instance? Dude, that was fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> okay then. same same point there. <laughs> I remember. When fucking Mortal Bison, Kombat. there was when, a Mortal Kombat movie, when, right? When Bison was like controlling was the submarine and he had there the joystick and the little A and B button, like it was an arcade game, and he was like all fucking trying to blow up Jean Claude Van Damme's ship. God damn it! What a horrible movie. I mean, really, I, I can't think of any movie based off of a video game that was all that. Yeah, but I think that's just because we had such high expectations. It's like you can't yeah. take one of the greatest games ever that isn't even doesn't even have a real storyline, really. Yeah, and and make this whole thing out of it. You know what I mean? For sure. But they keep doing it. So, and uh, on that note, I think that we're all going to leave and play Far Cry. Is that well? Sound about here, right? you know, I I, I have a oh. great segue. Let's rewind that. Let's rewind that. So, um, a good adaptation of a video game into a like a live action visualization yeah. is actually Far Cry. Far Cry 5, um, Ubisoft and Amazon Prime got together and did a 36-minute short film about Far Cry 5. What? Man, yeah, now, so that. I watched this beforehand, and it is um, it's a couple of teenagers who come into town and have to deal with, you know, they're coming to, oh, we're activists and we're here to fight, and, you know, they're taking over town. And they get like sucked into it. So you get a quick re- rendition of who the father is, what's going on. You have like life's life, actual live characters that looked and sounded. Now that I know what the characters look like, looked and sounded like the characters in the game. It was a very great adaptation. And I would love to see probably not a show because you couldn't pull enough out of it, but like a full length movie yeah. based on this game. Would be fucking incredible, man. That sounds cool. I'm gonna have to check. They that out. They just have to explain the the odd lack of federal government. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I feel like the feds would have been quick to swoop in if you know that. You think? You forever. think? Did they even explain that in the game? Like I haven't really been paying attention to every little cutscene. So like, they explain why like, why the federal government yeah, well, like, is you, you putting go a in... stop to this. You know, like it seems well, you, like they're you, controlling you enter, several counties. You enter with a federal marshal. Yeah, you enter. Yeah, with yeah, US no, marshal. exactly. And he gets. But I mean, like, still, you'd think that they would have come in with the national guard. And, then and I think I think how they tied it together was that uh, when the helicopter crashes. And the father, like, grabs the headphones and he tells Dispatch everything's fine. And then you find out Dispatch is part of the church. And she's like, yes, father, blah, blah, blah. And she's following the fucking shit the whole time and double-crossing the sheriff. So she told, you know, the marshal's office, hey, everything's cool. Marshal's over here eating crawdads. We're having a great time. Uh, No need to worry. I'm Nancy. And then probably blew up a plane on the way back. Yeah, bada-boom. And they were like, oh, there was some sort of accident, and they're kind of stalling for time. So they roughly explained it, whereas okay. she's doing something to keep everybody off the trail. So, I mean. so what I really, nice. <laughs> really, really like about this game is the fact that it pulls away the majority of your your, your HUD. You don't have a mini-map. Um, yeah, that's kind so of So you're not constantly looking at it. You have very, like... I haven't Natural figured interactions out. With I haven't figured out like the dealie on the the top. The compass. The compass. Yeah. Goes north, south, east, west. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> you know, you know that you know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Like, I mean, you, you probably wouldn't unless you've played the game, but it has the how it like marks everything for you. Yeah, yeah. It 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 what it does is it it physically puts a mark on top of where you mark on the map, so you need to physically face that direction to see the mark in right. real life yeah. game. I, I think I so instead of having like a little 360 of it, it'll give you like a 90 degree view. And you just gotta keep spinning around. Yeah, it gets strange. It gets weird. It does. But 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 they do that so it's a more natural feeling while you're playing the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the minimal HUD too. Mm-hmm. And it makes it like it makes it like you're. I get really sucked into that game for sure. It's like yeah, that game got me. For yeah, real. I, I, I've been enjoying. Yeah, it. I was, I, up, normally I was up at four this morning fishing. <laughs> I normally cannot stand first person games. Like I, I I'll, I'll refuse to play them, but you know, it just looks so impressive the graphics that I gave it a shot and I've I've been playing since. So. Yeah. And try when it, you're when you're aiming if you let go of the left trigger real quick and then put it back down, it'll kind of lock on to the dude real quick yeah, for like yeah. a split second. Bada, 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 now, see, bada, I bada. I've taken all of that off. I'm terrible at aiming, so I need that. No right. auto lock for you. No chance. No. Well, I, 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 the majority of what I do in the game is hunt. Yeah. So I spend a lot of time watching my bullet, my bullet drop, and which gun I'm using, and the range with the meters. So whenever I take on an outpost, I usually do it from a f- fairly far distance. God damn it! All right, I gotta go play. We're gonna go play Far Cry Five. We're done. Is hey, still recording? Hey, hey, hey! I feel like that might have turned off. The lens looks a little sucked in. <laughs> you know, we can play together, right? Yeah, I know. We need to figure that out. Yeah, you can do like multiple campaign, huh? That's yeah. so tight. And you can like pull someone into your story mode for help. You'd be like, yep. hey, I want to hire uh, Bill to be my gun for hire, and then you could come and help me. Yep. That's dope. We should do that. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the inaugural episode in the new studio went good. Uh, not Not very many snags. We got it all going. Everything's been good. I feel good. I'm stoked. Ricky Ticky Tang Tang, don't drink that Kool Aid. That was cool.